in 20 days, I'm going to pack up my bags, I'm going to jump on a big plane, and I'm heading overseas. This is the How You Going Madrid series. Hi everyone, my name's Paul Thompson, and yes, you heard right, 20 days to go on the countdown clock before I jump on a plane and head to Europe. Spain, first time over overseas, first long haul flight. There are so many firsts that I'm ticking off the box. The one I want to talk about today is Airbnb. It was my first time booking a place on Airbnb. Now I've heard about this platform for many a year. I work with a ton of people overseas who nomad around and are popping in and out of Airbnbs. So I've heard about it all the time. We don't really have it up in Australia where I live. It's, I think it was banned in some states. I could be completely making that up. I don't know, maybe there was Uber. I'm getting so confused now. Here's my problem, is that I am probably the most indecisive person that you will ever meet when it comes to picking food off menus, deciding on plans, or picking a place to stay. Thankfully, it was only me that I had to decide for, and I didn't have to take into account other people, so that kind of made the process a little bit simpler. It still took me four or five weeks to pick a place. See, Airbnb allows you to save properties, so I just put in my search parameters, picked a couple of items on like the amenities, anemones, anemones. Amnities. If you've never used Airbnb, they have this really cool feature in search where uh, once you save your search, so Madrid, the dates, um, what kind of place you're looking for, you can actually save properties to a wish list. Now this was like a blessing and a curse for me. What started off as uh, like, oh, that's a really good place. I'll save that to the wish list. The wish list ended up being longer than the listed properties there. Like I could have never have gone back through my wish list. So that kind of just backfired. It was double handling for sure. I needed a place that had a few things in particular. I needed uh, heating because it's going to be freezing over there. I needed uh, internet, wireless internet and I wanted my own private place. Oh, I wasn't really too comfortable on sharing my place with other people, only because for this instance, I just wanted my own place to retreat to. Like I wanted somewhere that I could just go and just debrief, unwind, do whatever I wanted to. That's, that's what I was hoping for. If I was sharing a place with someone else or like cohabitating, I wouldn't feel like I had that sense of privacy and downtime. So with Madrid, there happened to be hundreds of Airbnbs that fit my description, which was great, but kind of annoying because I was just kept on like clicking through all these pretty apartment looking things and it took forever. I found one. I, I found one, and by found one, I mean I got so sick of looking, I just picked one, and I'm really happy with it. It's about a four or five minute walk from where I'm working, and about a four or five minute walk to like the heart of Madrid, uh, Seoul, Plaza de Mer. I don't even know how to say that, Plaza de Mer. Maybe that can be my word of the week. Two other things that I really liked about the whole Airbnb process is one, I can search for properties that are listed by super hosts. Now super hosts are like Airbnb's version of people who are verified, go above and beyond for their guests, just put that extra little bit of attention and care um, and uh, seasoned Airbnb hosts. I felt more comfortable having a property listed by an Airbnb host in that maybe I'll get looked after a little bit more or if I'm like a lost Australian guy, someone can help me. I don't know. That was my thought pattern. The other thing that I liked was that you can um, select a property to instant book or you can select a property that you have to like, apply to stay in that person's place to cut corners. I just went the instant book place because I don't really have an Airbnb profile set up yet. I didn't want to suffer rejection of like asking for a place and then getting the host to be like, nah, you can't come over buddy. So I just went with the instant book super host. That combination still yielded a ton of results and it took me forever. I don't know if I did it wrong. Uh, in booking Airbnb. Maybe you have some extra tips for me for next time or on maybe how I could have done that differently. Am I using it right? Have I got the right thought patterns? Is that what a super host actually is? And is that what Instant Book actually does? I don't even know, but I did get a confirmation and I am so excited about going. Now, as we are leading up to Madrid, I wanna end each of these videos with my Spanish word of the day. Today's is gracias. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure, but it means thank you. So, 
Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe. Follow along with this journey. This has been episode two in How You Go in Madrid. I'll see you next time.